Hello my friends and welcome to another Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm armed with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick off today's proceedings with a little something about the PlayStation 5. So you may recall not too long ago there was a custom AMD APU silicon which was decoded because it was a bunch of numbers and letters and things to be, or at least theorised to be, should I say, the early AMD CPU, uh, APU, should I say, for the PlayStation 5. And now it has sort of raised its head again, but it has undergone some changes. There was a recent tweet from the well-known leaker Tom Apisak, who tweeted that this is going to be called the AMD Gonzalo. And we do see some changes in the string here. Now the first string, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it did begin 2G1600 and it showed a CPU which had 8 physical cores, a 3.2 gigahertz boost clock and a PCI ID which was apparently, according to theories, a Navi 10 Lite GPU. The latest code begins ZG160 and this can be decoded using Mo PC's decoder which will be linked in the description below this video if you wish to give it a crack yourself. Now, interestingly, the Z at the start is where we want to draw most of our attention because it heavily implies that it's a finalised product or at least coming close to becoming a finalised product. Also, from the code here, we can kind of glean that a lot of the specs are still the same as they previously were in their earlier version back in January. We still see 8 physical cores and we still see 3.2 GHz clock speed. However, we do see some progress being made in the stepping but interestingly, we see a change in the PCIe ID. We previously saw 13E9 being used, and this has been revised to 13F8. Now, this probably is just an iteration, excuse me, for my slight croak in my voice there, on the Navi 10 Lite GPU. They made some tweaks, perhaps, to do with Sony, what Sony are asking them to do, or how it's playing with the rest of the system, all that sort of stuff. Now, previously... Before the 13E9, we saw the number 10, and now we see the number 18. So whereas before it was 10 underscore 13E9, it is now 18 underscore 13F8. Does that actually matter, I hear you ask? And the answer is yes, it probably does, but it's hard to say exactly what it does mean. It could be... 1.8 gigahertz for example because the 10 on the previous code was expected to be the clock speed for the GPU. That would be pretty damn fast for APU graphics silicon. Just to give you some context for this comment, the PS4 Pro runs at 911 megahertz so 1.8 would be quite the leap I'm sure you'll agree. So let's just put that as speculation for now. In fact, obviously this whole thing is speculation. We're probably going to be learning at some point this year what's going on with the PlayStation 5. Of course, Sony are not going to be the E3. They have made that clear. But we may get some specs or at least confirmation of something about the PlayStation 5 later on this year. They have done before their own PlayStation event. So I wouldn't put it completely out so we'll hear something for certain in 2019. Unfortunately, we don't know anything else. It seems they have changed their decoding method. You can, you could previously use the Mo PC decoder to completely know what's going on, or at least know some of what's going on. But unfortunately, using the decoder, we can only get partial results. But still, I'm interested. Anywho, let's move on, shall we, to Intel. As I'm sure you recall, Intel announced just the other day that Intel Optane Persistent Memory, and it seems they've got quite a lot of Optane up their sleeves, as they have today revealed details about Intel Optane Memory H10 with solid storage. So what we basically have is a device which has X, 3D X point and QLC NAND flash on a single SSD, and this is on a M.2 form factor. I do have a bit of a statement here from Rob Crook, the Intel Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Non-Volatile Memory Solutions Group. And he said, quote, Intel Optane Memory H10 with solid state storage features a unique combination of Intel Optane technology and Intel QLC 3D NAND, exemplifying our disruptive approach to memory and storage that unleashes the full power of Intel connected platforms in a way no one else can provide. And I'm sure you're going, yeah, 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 that's all well and good, but what in terms of real world benefits are we going to see? Well, versus a normal hard drive, a standard hard drive, 
to boot into a game, you're going to load up, sorry, not boot into a game, sorry, load the next level up to 4.7 times faster than a traditional hard drive. When it comes to opening files, you'll be able to open large media files up to 90% faster while multitasking and your everyday work tasks apparently are going to be up to 2.2 times faster again versus a HDD by itself. Now unfortunately we do not know any details about pricing, but we do know what capacities it's going to come with. We see variants that have 16 gigs of Optane memory plus 256 gig storage, 32 gigs of Optane memory plus 512 gig storage, and 32 gigs of Optane memory plus 1 terabyte storage. Just to give you some perspective though, just to look at the price of just Optane memory by itself, a 16 gig stick is available from roughly $23, whereas a 32 gig stick is going to be $60. So you take that and you add it on the price of the actual memory, sorry, the storage space, should I say, itself. And you kind of get a rough idea of what price we're going to be looking at here. Still, very, very interesting stuff. But we're going to move away from the good to the bad, as we have some less than great news when it comes to NVIDIA. As we have a very concerning report from notebookcheck.net. Of course, there is going to be a link in the description below this video to their article. However, the TLDR of this is basically what they're saying is that we have a GeForce MX250 Max-Q laptop. Unfortunately, there are two variants of this and they aren't telling you the two variants and they also aren't telling you that apparently one of them is slower than the other. It is almost impossible to find out which it is before you buy it. We have two variants. We have a 25 watt variant and a 10 watt variant and that difference in power is significant. The 10 watt version is expected to perform about 30% slower than the 25 watt version based on the performance of the MX150 series. Now I'm sure you're going, okay, is there really no way to tell? Well, no, not really, because it's about the device ID. That is the only differentiator between the two, unless of course the manufacturer decides to tell you that this is a slower variant MX250. So the 25 watts has the device ID 1D13 and the slower 10 watt variant is going to be 1D52. And clock rates are again expected to be much slower on the 10 watt version. So just be careful guys, that's all I can really say. I mean, some manufacturers are already saying that they are going to be making sure the 25 watt variant is used. For example, Huawei have said that for the new MateBook X, they are going to be using 25 watts. And obviously if other manufacturers do the same, then obviously I will update you guys. Just getting it out there, say, look, you know, we're gonna be using 25 watt variant only, or if they are going to be using the slower variant in some of their models, then obviously it would be good if they told you somehow, maybe calling it version 2, or just some way for you to tell before you have forked over a fairly significant amount of money for your MX250. Not brilliant when stuff like this happens, in all honesty, not brilliant at all. If there was a way to tell, it wouldn't be such a big deal, but again... Not really the case here. But that is me done for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is really appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really does help us out a great deal. Uh, for any guys who have subscribed to our Patreon, the Patreon post is coming this weekend, so you can look forward to seeing what we have produced over the last month or so, the highlights, as it were, as well as, of course, our very heartfelt thanks. Anyway, that is me done as I said. Thank you again for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.